What an image. Brothers and sisters, how good it is to share this story up here at McCormick. As an athlete and a family of athletes myself, there are moments when the game of sports meets the real world and provides a glimpse into the best of our humanity. These are the moments that simply bring me to tears. How good it is to show a real life event in the midst of what Carter Hoover coined this rugged American individualism. You see, this story seems to be an anomaly today. We live in a world where a young child is told that it's a dawn eat dawn world, where he who dies with the most toys wins. We are called to think for ourselves, to care for ourselves, to work for ourselves, and live for ourselves first. We're Americans. We consume the most food and gas. We throw away the most. We spend the most money on big cars, big houses, and big toys. We are living the American dream. Let me tell you, growing up in a house with two brothers, a sister, three dogs, and two cats, I learned to get mine first. Otherwise, I may just end up like so many of the other dropouts and addicts that I grew up with back then. Yes. If you are anything like me, this idea of this rugged American individualism. It may have its downside as well. Something just doesn't feel right about this idea at times. What about those that suffered because of our success? You know, those people in Africa and in Trenton, New Jersey, on East 63rd Street, and in even our churches, the seminary, and even our own family. Should we celebrate the fact that we have a job while our good friends and co-workers that just let go last month? Should we celebrate our new church capital campaign while our sister congregation just shut its doors for the last time? Somehow, this rugged individualism doesn't seem as clean cut as once we thought. Now some of you are saying, yeah, Jeff, but even the text today seems to hint at this individualism. Verse 24 reads, Do you not know that in a race the runners all compete, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win it. Only one receives the prize? What in the world is Paul trying to get at here? So is Paul supporting such individualism? This text raises some serious questions for us as faithful believers faithful believers of God's word. We also can't ignore the implications of violence that one may pick up from this text as well. Paul mentions punishing the body and enslaving it in verse 27. What are we to gather from this? What does this have to do with the love of all these issues being of real importance? It would be short-sighted to read this text without taking into account chapters 8 and 9 as well. So we've got to go back and get the gist of Paul's entire message. You see, Paul is looking to stand in service of building up the community of these Corinthians in love through becoming all things to all people and through disciplined obedience. A major theme throughout Paul's letter with the Corinthians has to do with stressing the communal value over the individual. In fact, just before this section, Paul's talking about becoming a Jew to the Jews. And in verse 22, he writes, To the weak I became weak so that I might win the week. I have become all things to all people that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in his blessings. So in the midst of all this, what is Paul's gospel for these Corinthians? Actually, we'll see this more in chapters 12 and 13 as we follow along, which should be familiar to most. We, the body of Christ, have been saved by God's gracious love. And in response, we love as God loves us. And if you take this into account when reading Paul's letters today, you may be surprised at what you find. Let's go back here to verse 24. We are all called to be running the race. Yes, we are all running the race, 
whether we know it or not, to run with the hope of victory. Paul discusses some running for a perishable wreath, but the followers of Christ, we are running for an imperishable reward, eternal salvation in Christ Jesus. Paul tells us because of our hearts and minds set on this goal, we are to turn with, run with a purpose, with direction. This is the spiritual life of obedience in response to God's love. Yes, we're called to discipline our bodies, but not because they are evil, but so that our bodies may be used as instruments instead of obstacles to God's work in this world. So is this Paul's version of rugged individualism? Well, I think we have to be honest and say yes and no. Yes, Paul is compelling the Corinthians to take up ownership of their livelihoods. And no, this is not a message for the strong and powerful to stomp upon the weak, but a message to the entire community. And this victory, well, it depends on how we follow Christ together. You see, Paul's words are adding to the theme of community first that Paul is trying to communicate with the Corinthians all along. We run with and we run for each other. This charges the whole perspective of how we live our lives as followers of Christ. Yes, there may be a race, but we are no longer running for ourselves. We run for Christ. The Olympics today are filled with individuals who represent their nation proudly, and we, the body of believers, represent the one who allows us to run in the first place. We run for the kingdom of God. And so in the midst of this, what is God doing in these words? What have we to learn from Paul about how God runs? Well, God's calling. No, no, God is exhorting us to run, and God will carry us when needed. We're going to finish that, that race. As Paul runs for us towards eternal salvation, we are called to do the same for others. Yes, Paul used the image of a runner, but what other images can we imagine in this journey? A pastor at our home church, a teacher who stays after class to answer the questions from struggling students, those volunteers who traverse the world to accompany the marginalized, a friend who sits beside you when you are at the worst. Yes, we as ministers in our body of Christ, wherever we are called, are called to run with the focus on community first. We run for others as we run for Christ. This is no longer an individual event, but a team event. And this is what we see in our video today. And I see this right here in this community here at the corner. I see captain and staff going to take pay cuts in order to salvage an already damaged budget and economy. Yes, there will be loss, but we will press on together. We will see individuals washing dishes at our meals saying, God's creation is part of the race as well, and the devastation to our planet must stop. Sisters and brothers, teammates in this race, this is the good news. Yes, God wants us to run. And run together, we must. Yes, we may stumble, fall, or even collapse along the way, but we have an eternal goal of our Father's house in sight made possible in the gritty, persevering love of our Lord. God will pick us up and carry us down. Ain't nobody going to turn us round. The very brothers and sisters, is that God has already won the race for us. Jesus has already come and showed us the way of God's gracious love. And by hanging from that cross, God conquers death and he shows us life eternal. This is the finished line. Thanks be to God. Amen.